Hey folks, Matt from RightOfTheImage.com was thinking about lenses for wedding photography. I was just reading an article about the best lenses for wedding photography and the article was interesting but it dawned on me that what I think a lot of people don't realize is that you really only need two lenses for great wedding photography. That's it, just two. Uh, arguably, actually, you could you could probably get away with one, but if you have two lenses, you can do stellar wedding photography. What are those two lenses? You're probably wanting to know. Uh, basically, an 85 mil and a standard fast zoom, so a 24 to 70 f2.8, or arguably even one of the newer f4 lenses such as the nikon 24 to 120 uh, f4 vr or the new canon 24 to 105 f4 l uh, version 2 uh, or even the version 1 which was a really good lens now the caveat here is that these two lenses are the only two you need if you're shooting with a full frame body now not to worry i'm not saying you can't shoot with the dx or aps-c body i'm just saying that those are the lenses you would choose, the only two you need for full frame. The only two you need then for APS-C or DX, such as a Canon AD or a Nikon D7200, which are perfectly fine to shoot weddings with, uh, it changes because of the crop factor. So the only two you would need is a standard zoom, which is then a 17 to 50 or 17 to 55 F2.8, uh, and my favorite is the Sigma 17 to 50 f2.8 OS. And then instead of an 85 on a crop sensor body, you want a 50 because that gives us the same or very similar field of view of an 85. On the Canons, it's close to an 80 with the crop factor. On the Nikons, it's a 75. And that's why I like 50 mils. For those of you that are regular viewers of the channel, will know I love 50 mils, but on a crop sensor body. So, you know, if you're shooting Canon, and you want to shoot with a, uh, probably for me, if I was going to choose a, an APS-C body right now to shoot photography for weddings, it would be the new M5. I really like that camera. I like the look of it. The performance is great. And I would choose either Canon's own 17 to 50 or 55. I can't remember if that's a 50 or 55 on the long end. F2.8, which I've owned and is a very nice lens. Or I would get... Uh, my preference, the Sigma 17-50 f2.8 OS in a Canon mount. So there's your standard zoom covered. And in doing so, you've got 17-50. to 50. So, you know, you could you could arguably shoot an entire wedding with that fast, constant aperture f2.8 zoom. And then add in uh, the Canon 50mm f1.8 STM. You could add in the Canon 50mm f1.4 which is a very nice lens as well, or even the Sigma 50mm f1.4. If you want to keep it to a budget and still have a very nice, good performing sharp lens, you stay with the f1.8 STM. So that's the only two you need for the Canon side. For the Nikon side, I would go with the Nikon f1.8G, the 50mm f1.8G. It's very sharp, very nice performing lens. If you want to spend a little extra money, you could step it up to the 50mm uh, f1.4G also a very nice lens or the sigma 50 mil f1.4 or i guess alternately you could even step back if you're shooting with say an, uh, a nikon d7200 or a d7100 uh, one of the cameras that has a motor drive you could use the uh, 50 mil f1.8d or the 50 mil f1.4d as um, you know i recently purchased a 50 mil f1.4d at a very good price 200 dollars canadian uh, so you know around 150 us uh, which is great and auto focuses on a D7200. You pair that with a Sigma 17 to 50 F2.8 OS or Nikon if you prefer the Nikon 17 to, I can't remember now if that's a 55 or not. One of those two I think is a 55. In any case, um, the Nikon standard zoom for DX, which would be the Nikon 17 to 50 or 55 uh, F2.8. And you've got a great setup. And you put that with a 7200 or a pair of 7200s, and you leave those lenses fixed on each body, you've got a killer setup for shooting weddings. Uh, th that's all you need. Those are giving you your equivalent or close to 85s and your standard zoom. Now, on the on the Canon and on the Nikon, that's obviously for the Canon. That's the 24 to 70 f2.8, either the version 1 or 2. Those are L lenses. Very good. Uh, and you can either go with the Canon 85 f1.8, which is a very nice lens, or you could step up to um, 
the if you want to go to the f12 l which is very nice lens but more expensive and there's also the sigma 85 millimeter f14 on the nikon side same thing we've got the nikon uh 24 to 70 and the new vr version there's a few iterations in there you can even go back to the 28 to 70 f28 which is a really nice lens i own that I actually kind of prefer it to the 24 to 70 um and then you could use the um Nikon 85 F18G, which is one of my favorite lenses. There's also the F14G, and there's the Sigma F14G in a Nikon mount. So as you can see, two lenses, um, you know, that's going to cover you very nicely for a wedding. You, you know, some people might wish they had a little longer reach, but I've shot many weddings with this setup, and 85 is really all you need. If you, you can get in closer with your feet, it gives you that shallow depth of field for the shots that you want, shallow depth of field, and it gives you a fast lens for uh, low light situations. And then you've got a, you know, as fast a zoom as you can pretty much get with the F2.8 zoom. So, or conversely, if you go with an F4 zoom uh, with the newer bodies, you can do that, especially on the full frame bodies, which are very good high ISO. Now, you might say, well, what about micro four thirds? And yeah, you can do the same thing. Let's take the Panasonic, for instance. I'm filming right now with the G85. Or if you're an Olympus fan, the brand new Olympus EM1 version 2, uh, get yourself either the uh, Panasonic 12 to 35 f2.8, which is a beautiful lens that gives us our standard 24 to 70 equivalent f2.8. And then throw in, uh, well, my favorite is the Panasonic 42.5 f1.7. There's a, an 85 mil equivalent zoom or not Zoom, Prime. You can put those two together and shoot weddings all day with a pair of G85s or even a pair of G7s or GX8, GH4, GH5, which is coming. Uh, on the Olympus side, you could use the same lenses or you could go with the Olympus, what is it, the 12 to 40, I think it is, F2.8. I owned that a while ago and it's, uh, I haven't had that in for a bit. I think it's a 12 to 40 F2.8, but they're standard F2.8 Zoom. And then the Olympus... Um, has a very nice 45 f1.8 um, that, that is, is great. So you could get that, and uh, that actually may be an f1.7. I've owned that too, I just haven't had it for a bit, so I can't remember if that's an f1.8 or an f1.7. But anyways, that is a very nice lens too. Um, the advantage with the Panasonic is it's image stabilized. Um, now, of course, with the Olympus bodies, they're image stabilized, as are the newer Panasonics, but uh, I really like the Panasonic lens. The Olympus is nice, but I really have a soft spot for that Panasonic lens. You know, the same thing with the Sonys. I mean, the same type of situation applies with the Sonys. You could get, uh, in the Sony land, I probably would go F4s. I'd probably get the 18-105 to 105 F4. You could go with the 16-70 to 70 F4. And that's on full frame. Um, on the, um, well, no, that's not full frame. That is on the E-mount. I always get the, the E-mounts and whatnot, the two... They've changed the designations enough between NEX and E-mount that sometimes I get a little uh, mixed up going from memory. But basically what you're looking for is a standard zoom and one of the F4 or a constant F2.8 standard zoom. And then you could go with, uh, I mean, Sony has some very nice 50 mil F1.8s uh, in the E-mount or in the other lens lineup. Um, they got the 50 and then you've got 85s available. Now that may be where you don't get, I'm not sure that Sony has an F1.8. I know they have an older F2.8. But regardless, you can see the point here. You want an equivalent 85 mil and a standard fast zoom. Now when I say fast, that could very well be these days an F4. And certainly with the full frame bodies from any system, uh, an F4 would be fine. And you would also benefit from the longer reach and you've got your 85 equivalent for portraits and, and speed. What do you guys think? Uh, I've shot a lot of weddings with this type of setup. Uh, most recently, that would have been probably with the D7000 a few years back uh, with the Sigma 17-50 OS. And the, um, well, I would, I would have had several primes, but the one I would always carry at the time was the Nikon 50mm F1.8G. That was a, a, a really great pairing that I, I've shot many weddings with just those two lenses. Um, gone out on weddings with other lenses in the bag and never pulled them out. Uh, certainly not necessary. What do you guys think? Have you shot similar situations? Have you, have you shot a wedding with a similar setup? Um, do you have a different set of lenses that you would use? I'm going with two here. Um, 
So I guess basically, do you agree with me? Do you think you can do a wedding professionally and well done with two lenses? I know you can because I've done it. Um, but would these be the, the lenses you would choose, the standard zoom? Or, you know, I guess one of the alternatives you could do, especially I know friends um, that like to shoot with a pair of primes, whether that's a 24 and an 85 uh, some people even like like a 35, a little bit longer, and then either an 85 or a 100 perhaps. What do you guys think? Let me know in the comments below. What would you shoot with if you had a two lens setup for weddings? And have you done it? Let me know. Let me know what your experience is. And was that comfortable or did you feel like you're still missing lenses? Thanks for tuning in, folks. Looking forward to your comments in the uh, comments section. We'll have discussion on that. And uh, stay tuned. We'll be back soon here at ArtOfTheImage.com.